I've written a book called The Apple and the Tree. And it's my first uh, full book because my previous ones have all been compilations of the column that I've been writing in the Star for over 30 years. So this book is a memoir of me and my dad. And so what were the challenges of writing this um, for the first time? Well, of course, trying to decide what events I should talk about and how it relates to the topic, which is about the relationship of my father and I. And of course, trying to remember the actual incidents. It's not easy, but somehow I do remember specific things that happened in my childhood. And for more contemporary things, I have my journal. I think a very easy to read um, story about my life from childhood until adulthood um, and um, just various incidents that if you're Malaysian you might recognize otherwise I think I hope it illuminates uh, the way I think and my relationship with the, my father Maybe, I think there might be some surprising things that might come up, such as the fact that I often feel very insecure about my own abilities and I have imposter syndrome, which everyone is surprised at, but I do. And there's a reason for this, many reasons for this. As a loyal daughter, and at the same time trying to be true to myself and you know for me to speak the truth always but also to be mindful that I have this public figure as a father and it would be very bad if I were to sound disloyal to him in public. I don't know whether that's something for me to say I think that would be up to him really. <laughs> And the way other people see it, I, I'm not sure about that. Uh, has he read the book? Yes, he has actually. He actually finished it, but then it's not difficult to, to finish it. And he said, well, some things were not quite right. Uh, some events were not quite, he thought, the way it happened. But generally, I think he liked it. And I think he also found out about a lot of things that he didn't know about childhood things and all that. Yes, I would love to, except that I don't really know how to. So I have some ideas in my head about stories, but I think I need to go and learn a bit more how to write fiction, how to develop characters particularly. Well, I just finished Chanel Miller's Know Your Name. Chanel Miller was the woman who was raped by a Stanford student and had to fight for justice in the American courts and all that. And it's the first time you really get the point of view of the victim and how hard it was to maintain her identity and herself and her dignity. So I do recommend everyone should read it. I think for aspiring writers, my main advice is write it down because if it's a story that remains in your head, it's not a book and you have to write it down. Write it down and then work on it, work on it, work on it after that. Well, as a child, I guess the San Kanchil stories, which I you know, talk about in my book, which we used to follow our gardener around the garden because he would tell us the stories and they were great. They were great life lessons as well. My favorite memories as a child is that, going around um, our garden, following the gardener and listening to his stories. Actually, we had a lovely big garden which could run around and climb trees and things like that.
Yes, I've been an activist for several causes uh, over the years, mostly HIV AIDS and for women's rights, particularly Muslim women's rights, uh, which is difficult. Um, HIV AIDS, of course, was a subject that a lot of people thought was taboo for the longest time, but it was necessary because it was a pandemic, just like the COVID pandemic. In fact, I think that the COVID pandemic management could have learned a lot from the AIDS pandemic management. As far as women, I think that there's a long way to go in fighting for women's rights in this country, and particularly for Muslim women because people are so afraid when it comes to religion and they don't want to really touch it. Um, how did I become involved? Mostly by accident, really. Um, I didn't wake up one day and decide I would. It's just that people asked me to come and help, and I did, and then it became a motivation in itself. You know, the progress that you want to see is not happening. You have to keep working at it. Sometimes it's two steps forward and one step back, or one step forward and two steps back. You just can't stop. Uh, or else we'll be stagnant and maybe regress. Be aware of what is happening around them. And, you know, they don't have to do a lot. Sometimes it's just by volunteering, like, you know, volunteering for the floods and all that. That will open your eyes to what needs to be done. And hopefully that will motivate, um, you know, you to do it. I used to be quite obsessed with social media like Twitter and all that but now I decide no it's not very healthy so I just go off it and don't bother um, because you know there's just some people out there who just have nothing better to do than to say nasty things about you well I think they should be out there helping people rather than doing that so you know I, I just don't entertain it and, and just go off it.